Hi, I'm Dr. Paul and I really like explaining stuff. Today I'm going to be doing a video on volume of distribution of drugs. I've already done a video before uh, which many people liked. It's a bit shorter. So if you prefer a shorter version, please go there. And if that feels a little confusing, you can stay on. This is a more relaxed and a longer version. Now imagine that we have three beakers. Now all of them are filled with water. The first beaker is 1 liters, the second one 3 liters and the last one is 5 liters. I also have some table salt with me. Let's say 10 milligrams. Now if I dissolve this 10 milligrams in the first beaker and I ask you what do you think is the volume of distribution of the table salt, you probably would guess that it's 1 liter. Well, guess what, you are right. The table salt gets dissolved and distributed in one liter and we know that the salt will dissolve completely and of course the volume of distribution is one liter. And similarly, if I, if I had dissolved it here in the second one or in the third one, the volume of distribution would be three liters or five liters respectively. Now have this in mind and think about this. Imagine that a person's body had blood circulating only within the uh, circulatory system, that is the heart and arteries and veins. It does not leak out, it does not, it's completely closed, it's a closed chamber. The beaker and I'm just telling you that I've dissolved 10 milligrams of table salt find the volume of distribution. Now you really can't find the volume of distribution with this information alone. What you need is concentration. If you can take a little sample of this and measure its concentration, its concentration can give you a clue as to what would be the volume in which it was dissolved. Let's say the concentration after I measure is 10 milligrams per liter. We know that concentration is mass by volume. It's something which is very basic. Uh, some of my students forget this, they get confused, they try to memorize it. Please don't do that. Look at concentration, its weight by volume. Now what you are trying to find out is volume, you already know the concentration, you also know the weight, that's 10 milligram. So concentration 10 milligrams per liter is 10 milligrams divided by V, you just rearrange it, V should be 10 milligrams by 10 milligrams per liter, that should be 1 liter. It's not surprising that was its original volume. If you know the concentration, you can find the volume of the beaker and that's what I'm trying to say here. Now why is that, uh, you know, why is that relevant here? Because if you think about this example, when you can inject a substance into the blood, you can also take a little bit out to measure its concentration. So if you can inject phenytoin 20 milligrams, wait for it to completely get distributed within the circulatory tree take a little bit out, measure its concentration, you should be able to find the volume of distribution. So the volume of distribution would be, you know, we just saw it's, uh, you know, I, I can write this like this, volume of distribution is mass by concentration. And this mass refers to the dose and concentration refers to the steady state concentration. So mass, which is the dose and concentration, which is the steady state. Don't worry about the steady state, it basically is similar to what I discussed here. You are stirring it completely and steady state is the state where a kind of equilibrium has been reached for now, okay? 
Okay, but there is a problem here. We assume that the blood is completely intact. It does not mix with other parts of the body. Nothing leaves the blood. But that's not true. In fact, the blood is very leaky. It, it, it reaches the interstitial, inter, interstitium and intercellular volume. Now, how do we use that information here or how is that going to change? Now, come back here and think of a magical fish. So, this is a magical fish which can eat table salt and it's magical because you really can't see it. Now what this does is that the moment you put 10 milligrams and you stir it, this fish eats some, eats some of it. And then when you try to take the concentration, you get a lower concentration because it has already eaten some. So instead of 10 milligrams which you initially got, let's say you get 5 milligrams per liter. And you happily, you know, assume that that's the real concentration and you go on to find 10 milligrams divided by 5 milligrams per liter, which is 2 liters. So you estimate the volume of distribution as 2 liters here. But in reality, the beaker is just 1 liter. What you estimated was wrong, was more than what was real, but that's what you see according to your calculations. That's because of this fish. And if you think about this, Earlier, our concept of volume of distribution was like how much was the volume in which my drug was getting distributed. But right now, because of the fact that we have a fish inside, the number that I get here is dependent on how much this fish eats. Let's say the fish eats more, then I would, exp you know, I would observe a concentration lower than 5. Let's say I observe 2 milligrams per liter. Uh, if I calculate, That's 5 liters. So the higher the fish eats, the lower the concentration that I will calculate or I mean I will measure and the higher the volume that I would calculate. So the higher the fish eats, higher will be the volume of distribution that I estimate. So now our concept of volume of distribution has slightly changed. Instead of thinking about the volume of the water, we are talking about how much the fish eats. Now you can kind of apply the same thing in the example of the body as well. Because we know that the blood is not intact. It's going to go to various other compartments in the body. You know, the body has various other compartments. The interstitial space, the uh, intracellular space, the extracellular space and things like that. So the drug molecules, phenytoin molecules are constantly keeping, uh, keep moving around. So now the concentration that I measure is dependent on how much goes out. If more of phenytoin leaves the vascular space, I'll estimate a lower concentration. And once the concentration decreases, I'll estimate a higher volume of distribution. And if more of phenytoin is going to stay within the blood, then the concentration will be high and lower would be the volume of distribution that I would expect. So volume of distribution gives an idea as to how much the drug molecules leave the vascular space. So volume of distribution depends on how much the drug molecules leave the vascular space. It's as simple as this and you don't have to memorize any formula. It's just concentration is masked by volume. Even if you forget it, look at concentration somewhere. The units already tell you what the formula is. Rearrange. The concentration refers to the steady state concentration. The mass refers to the dose of the drug that was used and volume here refers to the volume of distribution. A side note here, uh, when we say volume of distribution, because of the fact that it's not the real volume that we are measuring, it's also called as the apparent volume of distribution. So sometimes uh, this, these terms are used interchangeably. Sometimes specifically we use apparent volume of distribution. 
In fact, apparent volume of distribution is the more accurate term to be used. So with this knowledge, you could find out or do any calculation that requires you to calculate the volume of distribution. I'll be coming back and doing few problems which use these formulas in order to calculate the volume of distribution or the loading dose. And I'll also be talking about how protein binding or plasma protein binding can affect uh, the volume of distribution in a later video. Thank you.